Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 8th of February in this quick look at the week beginning the 11th of February. And it's been a bit of a mixed bag of a week for global equity markets. We've seen some disappointing, we've seen a disappointing performance from European markets in general. No, the FTSE 100 has been an exception to that, while US markets have found it difficult to move beyond some very important technical resistance levels. And I think there's a number of factors at play, I think, behind the fact that we do appear to be running out of steam for the rally that we've seen so far since the beginning of this year. Um, There's been a number of factors that have weighed on risk appetite over the course of the past two to three days. Some significant downgrades of growth forecasts by central banks as well as um, other economic institutions. Since the Federal Reserve downgraded its outlook for the US economy and became an awful lot more cautious on the trajectory of its rate path, we've seen central bank after central bank revised down its growth forecast. We had the Bank of England, we've had the Reserve Bank of Australia downgrade their growth forecasts for 2019. We've seen the European Union downgrade, well, actually take a take a scalpel to the growth forecasts for the European Union, um, particularly Germany and Italy, um, which have dropped to the bottom of the league when it comes to expectations for growth and the Bank of England cut its growth forecasts for the UK economy from 1.7 to 1.2 percent over concerns about um, Brexit risk. So against that backdrop and the fact that President Trump and Xi now aren't and China's President Xi are now not scheduled to meet before the March the 1st deadline we've seen a whole host of profit taking on equity markets in general. And with respect to the DAX, those of you who've been regular um, listeners to these videos will know that I've been looking at the 11,000 level on the DAX as a significant support level for the breakout that we saw at the beginning of this year. And now we're now back retesting it, as well as the 50-day moving average. So I think that's going to be a very key support level going forward. And I think it's likely to continue to do so um, f- over the course of the next few days. If we do fail to stay above this 11,000 level, then I think there's a decent chance we could well head back towards 10,800. We're not there yet. We're, we're currently just about holding above it. And I'll be keeping a close eye on that. The FTSE 100 has formed, performed slightly better over the course of the past couple of weeks unlike European markets, which are weighed down by lower, lowered growth expectations. We've seen some decent gains over the course of the past few days. We're starting to give some of them back, but we're struggling to get through this 7,180 level, 7,200 level that I identified just over a week ago as a key resistance level for the FTSE. It's a similar story for the S&P 500. We failed to get above the 200-day moving average. And again here, a key technical resistance level on both the FTSE 100 and the S&P are likely to be key arbiters of where we go to next. At the moment, we've dropped back towards the 2680 level on the S&P 500, and that's likely to be a key support level going forward. If we break back below that on the daily chart, then we could well see a little bit of a drift back down towards the 2,600 level. So those are the key levels that I'm keeping an eye out for on the DAX, the FTSE 100 and the S&P. And now we're going to be looking ahead to next week, the progress of China-US trade talks, because ultimately I think while... um, while while it's become apparent that President Xi and Trump won't be meeting before the 1st of March deadline, which is when tariffs are due to, co- due to go higher, the fact that they're not meeting doesn't necessarily mean that tariffs will automatically increase by the extra 15% um, that they are expected to do on March the 1st. We could get another extension. Talks are ongoing. 
Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnookin is scheduled to go to Beijing in the coming few days to talk to Chinese officials um, to try and get a much closer agreement on next steps in the China-US trade talks. It's also a big week for the UK economy in the wake of the Bank of England's decision to keep rates unchanged. And ultimately, I think while um, Mark Carney, the Bank of England governor, was a little bit downbeat in terms of his growth expectations, I also think that it's worth looking at the fact that the growth, the GDP downgrade from the Bank of England, whether or not you believe they're accurate or not, was still well above the levels that the German economy is expected to grow this year. There is a significant concern at the moment amongst European central bank or European officials, in fact, that the ECB doesn't have the monetary tools to deal with a new prolonged slowdown in the European economy. Now, we've heard from ECB officials and Mario Draghi in particular in recent weeks that um, the slowdown that we've seen over the course of the past few weeks and months is supposed to be temporary. In fact, ECB President Mario Draghi's recent comments to the European Parliament have suggested that they believe that any slowdown would be temporary. And it's been a consistent refrain from the ECB for over a year now. And yet here we are, still seeing gradual declines in economic activity, with the prospect that the three biggest European economies of Germany, France and Italy are all in, or heading towards a technical recession. And that's really weighing on euro dollar. And in the process, actually helping support the US dollar. The US dollar has, has continued to gain this week quite substantially. And it's not for any reasons as to that the market thinks that the Fed is going to raise rates. It's not. US 10-year yields um, have continued to decline. In fact, if you look at US 10-year yields on a line chart, as shown here, we're down around about 2.64%. And any subsequent rally in US 10-year yields has been much shallower than the previous one. So the direction of travel for US yields is lower. Unfortunately, the biggest problem is that while US yields are heading lower, so are German yields, so are um, UK yields, and so are Japanese yields. Italian yields are going the opposite way, but for obviously completely different reasons. There's concerns about their ability to actually fund any fiscal program and run into uh, and run foul of EU fiscal rules. So that's a slightly different story. But German Bund yields are heading lower. The differentials between German and US rates are moving in the dollar's favour. And that is why Euro dollar is declining against the dollar. And ultimately, we could well see a retest of these 112.80 lows and these 112, these 112.20 lows that we saw in December. The direction of travel for Euro dollar does appear to be towards the lower end of the range. And if you look at every single subsequent rally from these lows here, they have been getting shallower. So if we do break this support level around about 112.80, we could well head lower. The pound, on the other hand, has been slightly more supported. That being said, that is likely to remain um, quite volatile. Decent support again in the pound against the dollar, around about 128.10, 128.20, um, which is the lows that we've seen here. We could well see a drift back down here. But again, it's a big week for the pound coming up. We've got another war is scheduled to get another UK parliamentary vote on a prospective plan B and we've got a host of UK data coming out. Now, while we're expecting to see another meaningful vote on any changes to the withdrawal agreement, I don't think we're going to get one simply because at this moment in time there haven't been any changes to the withdrawal agreement. The UK still wants the Irish backstop removed and while there hasn't been any shift in positions, there has been agreement to meet later in the month for further talks. Now, we could see further attempts by Parliament to take steps to try and prevent a no-deal scenario from happening with the revival of the Cooper Amendment, which could force the Prime Minister to seek an Article 50 extension. And that is something that is continuing to look ever more likely, simply because we are running out of parliamentary time to pass the necessary legislation for even a no-deal scenario. So I think both sides will want to try and get some form of Article 50 extension in place over the course 
of the next few weeks. We've also got UK fourth quarter GDP numbers out on the 11th of February um, and they're likely to show a little bit of a weakness from the numbers in Q3. Um, probably something in the region of 0.2 or 0.3 percent. Certainly Q1 is looking a lot weaker than the Q4 numbers and we'll get a first indication of them. And we've also got UK inflation data out on the 13th of February. Now in December's numbers they came in at 2.1 uh, which was a 22 month low and that was largely driven by a fall in airfares and a decline in fuel costs. I don't expect those numbers to significantly increase though um, rail fares increase do come into the numbers in January. There does tend to be a little bit of a boost at the beginning of the year but they're not expected to be significantly weaker. They might be slightly stronger. We've also got a whole host of US numbers retail sales for January are due out on the 15th. Um, we've also got EU flash GDP numbers on the 14th of February. Let's hopefully we don't get a St Valentine's Day massacre on the equity markets in the wake of any data that comes out on that particular day. And it's also a very big week for earnings. We've got Royal Bank of Scotland's latest full year results. We've got some uh, more results from the retail sector in the form of Dunelm Group. And we've got further important numbers out of the US. Deer & Co first quarter numbers, CME Group and Coca-Cola. So quite a busy week lined up. The main things to keep an eye out for is for progress in US-China trade talks, um, UK and EU GDP numbers, as well as any parliamentary activity um, with respect to parliamentarians' attempts to force a no-deal um, on to the UK government. So that is it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.